All right, folks, welcome back. It is officially the new year. Welcome to 2024. Unfortunately, that means that the demo is no longer available. We will have to wait until February for a new demo version or some time after that before the full release of the game. Lucky for me, I was able to, uh, in the last two days before the demo became unavailable, I was able to complete routing and recording another of these potentially interesting, highly optimized runs for you. And so if we look in the bottom left corner here, we've got $2,361. Uh, this is at the end of round 15. Um, we still have one more round to go. That is the final round, uh, the final boss. And so one question is, how much money can we earn in the final round, in just one round? Or, you know, related in total, how much money can we make over the whole run? Uh, I'll say before I started the YouTube channel, I did a similar run optimizing for how much money we could make. And we ended up earning a record of $1,870. This was, uh, in the ancient past, this was before we had access to the seed searcher. So we had to uh, use whatever seeds that we just found kind of in the wild, naturally. Um, times were hard. Uh, I will say that this 1870 this was completely legitimate. No cheats or external tools or glitches. So this glitchless record. I mentioned glitchless because something that we're doing differently this time, we're going to use the white whale duplication glitch so that we can have access to things like two copies of blueprint, two copies of dusk, and really push the boundaries of what's possible. If you're not familiar with this white whale glitch, um, I'll put a link in the description of this video. I have a much shorter video explaining sort of how that works, how this duplication glitch works. Um, the short version is the game has some protection uh, preventing you from seeing and then purchasing duplicates. If there would be a duplicate in the shop, it skips that duplicate and it offers you the next thing in line instead. And, you know, usually we use that to our advantage. We like skipping duplicates so that we can skip to whatever the joker that we actually want is further down the line. Uh, the way the glitch works is it removes the protection that blocks duplicates and allows you to see those duplicates and allows you to purchase those duplicates if those duplicates are sort of naturally occurring on whatever seed that you're using. And so as far as, you know, picking out what would be the best seed for this type of thing, making the most money that we could, we originally were searching for what would be the best seed to make a high score. And so we wanted things like the multiple blueprints and multiple dusk to go with our glass and polychrome cards and get a high score that way. Also, in order to fit those jokers in our lineup, we wanted a decent number of negatives, and we also wanted a decent number of these multiplicative scoring jokers. For example, uh, Constellation and Stencil and Blackboard. Now, this uh, high score run that we did, um, it's available, I have a video, the raw gameplay footage as one video and then separately uh, two and a half hours, two and a half hours of footage explaining the run, you know, all of the different steps taken to optimize it. So if you want to check that out, uh, you know, feel free if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but what I want to talk about this time is sort of uh, what makes this seed different. This seed is not the one that was used to get that super high score. Uh, in this seed... Uh, what ended up being, you know, sort of the runner-up. You know, we still have access to the blueprints and the dusk here, but we didn't have access to as many of those scoring jokers. We didn't have access to as many negatives. You know, you still get 
Uh, there's like four negatives in the shop, but it's not as many. Um, so despite all of those disadvantages, you know, we're not able to get this high score, but this seed is still useful for, uh, you know, going for money. So one thing that makes this seed somewhat unique is we've got the burglar and, you know, not necessary for going for a high score, but this burglar, I can copy it twice with my blueprints, giving me access to 13 hands per round. And then with my 13 hands, I can also copy my eight ball, giving me three tarot cards per hand, assuming that I have the crystal ball voucher allowing me to actually use three tarot cards per hand. Now, in order to play, uh, you know, if you have 13 hands and you're playing two eights per hand, that's already 26 eights, that's a lot of eights. So another thing that makes this seed special, you know, not just the burglar, we also have access to the gold seal. And with gold seal eights, you know, every time I play my eights, it's going to return to my hand and I can replay them the same hand over and over and over again. Um, the high scoring seed, you know, didn't have the gold seal because it didn't need the gold seal. This one does have the gold seal. We've also gone and we've made our eights into uh, lucky cards. And so every time you play a lucky card, there is a small chance to give you a large amount of money. It averages out to slightly less than $1 per card every time you play it. Um, and so if I'm playing, let's say, three eights per hand, that's an extra $3 per hand on top of whatever tarot cards we're making. Uh, for the, you know, the original, the... $1,870 that we did, uh, we did gold seal eights with gold seal jacks as well. And so, you know, you would play a full house, eights and jacks, and you would get a uh, business card money as well from your jacks in addition to your eights. Uh, this time, we don't have access to the business card. Uh, instead, we're going to be using these dusk jokers because when we get to the end of the round, we're able to copy the dusk with these blueprints. We can move the blueprints off of the eight ball, move them onto the dusk. And then that way for the last hand, we get extra activations of our lucky cards, um, potentially getting extra money that way. Um, it's not as good. It's not as good as the, uh, what is it? The business card with the jacks, but we didn't have the business card. So we're using the dusk instead. It, it is some money from the dusk. All right, so the plan is we will go through from the beginning. I'll sort of walk you through the whole run, you know, step by step, what's going on. Um, what I've done differently this video compared to past videos that I've done, I've recorded separately the gameplay footage. And so this is 43 minutes of just sort of uninterrupted game actions. Um, if you want to see, you know, just the gameplay footage, that will be a separate video that I'll make available and I'll link it in the description so you can check that out. Um, you know, maybe uh, put on your favorite soundtrack in the background. Uh, I like the Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack, Shang-Chi soundtrack, uh, Arcane soundtrack. Uh, those are my favorites personally, but you find one that works for you. Or, you know, we could just watch this uh, commentary instead. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to play the gameplay footage at two times speed. That way we can sort of skip the repetitive stuff. Um, you know, it, it's a bit of a grind. You know, if you're playing 13 hands and it's just the same hand every time, then not every hand is going to be interesting. Not every hand is going to be worth comment, commenting on. So we'll skip through the boring stuff, the repetitive stuff, and then when there's something meaningful to talk about, we'll pause and then we'll do that. That's the plan. All right, something else I want to say about the seed that we're using. Uh, this seed I did use before, actually. Um, 
I wanted to try to win with zero cards left in the deck. And so one way to remove cards from your deck is with the Immolate from the Spectral Pack. Um, you can also use the Hangman Tarot card, copying it with the Fool Tarot card. But the, the main way, the main way that we were able to remove cards from our deck was these gold seal cards, we turn them into glass cards. And so if you repeatedly play your same glass card, you can eventually get it to break. Um, and so we made these gold seal glass cards. We use death to make copies of them, allowing us to break the other cards in our deck. Um, that's what we did before. So we will be reusing this seed. We will be reusing some of the routing that we had at the beginning of that seed. Um, also, I will say, because I have separated the gameplay from the commentary, um, I don't have to think about the actions that I'm taking. So, you know, potentially we could get some different or, you know, better commentary on the same game actions because now, you know, I don't have to think about it as much. All right, in the first round here, we have a, a sor sort of normal looking discard at first, but then immediately in the second hand here, uh, I move the nine of clubs before discarding. Um, I have a, another video tutorial, which I'll link in the description about this, what I'm calling shuffler manipulation. Uh, the main idea being whatever order that you play your cards in and discard your cards in, you know, order meaning not just discard here and then discard there, but you know, if you rearrange your cards before discarding them, that will have some influence on where your cards end up in the future. And so kind of what this is doing here is uh, where the two of diamonds would have been in the future, now I've put the nine of clubs in that position where the two of diamonds was. And you know, wherever the three of diamonds was, the two of diamonds is now there wherever the nine of clubs was the four of or the seven of hearts is going to end up there so you know everything gets kind of uh shuffled around here um and i sort of have calculated and figured out mapped out where things will end up so that they end up in the correct places uh for the next hand here uh we sorry uh that was a little bit too fast we move the three of clubs before discarding uh, the fact that it's the three of clubs doesn't matter super much. Uh, it's just, again, we're manipulating things so that they end up in the correct place. Uh, for example, in the shop here, we've got immolate that's going to remove five cards. And this 10 of hearts was in the first round. I moved the 10 of hearts so that it ended up here in this spectral pack. And then now when I take the emulate, it'll get rid of all three of these tens. I was able to get rid of an extra 10 instead of, you know, there might have been an eight ending up here. And I didn't want to remove an eight from my deck. Uh, I will also say uh, when we were going for the high score seed, you know, we were searching for that. One of the things that we were searching for was we wanted to search for seeds that started with emulate in the first shop. So that either, you know, we could just get our money off the ground and, you know, we can start generating interest from that. Um, or if the first ante had the telescope voucher or if the first ante had our eight ball or a blueprint or both, we wanted to have enough money that we could afford those. And so if we go, you know, back here to the shop, we have the eight ball and the blueprint. Um, we set it up you know, when we were doing the seed searching, we wanted the eight ball and the blueprint to show up relatively early, not necessarily in the first shop, but within the first couple shops. And it just so happened on this seed, it was the literal first shop. Now, one thing that we're gonna be doing differently compared to when we did the glass run on this same seed, we're going to set up the duplication glitch. Uh, we didn't use it before because one, we didn't need to, and you know I wanted to do as much as we could uh, without using any glitches. But this time, okay, we've authorized, we're gonna use this glitch. So the way that we do it, before we purchase these jokers, we're gonna open the collection, find the jokers in the collection, and then close the collection. That's it, open the collection, find the joker, close the collection. And 
for some reason that is going to uh, trick the game into thinking that these jokers aren't there. And then when we purchase them, later on when the blueprint shows up, it won't recognize that we already have one, so it will offer us uh, another blueprint in the future. All right, in the next round here, discarding mostly just looking for this uh, full house, eights and fives. Uh, to win this round uh, with our eight ball here, we want to play two sets of eights combined with two sets of three to make two flush houses will be enough, or sorry, two full houses will be enough points to win the round. So uh, this five of diamonds in the previous round, a little bit of work to get the five of diamonds to line up for this full house. And then also for our eights to line up. All right, we want to sell most of the stuff that we get from our eight ball, you know, whatever tarot cards that we get. Um, also for the planet cards, when we were going for the glass run, we ended the run with just, you know, one card. Um, and so we wanted to rely on high card as, you know, sort of the last hand that we played. Um, and so we took a lot of Pluto cards. Um, this time, something that's going to be different is, okay, well, we don't need the Pluto cards. Actually, we're not going to take any planet cards, you know, not even the high end one, not even uh, five of a kind or flush house, no planet cards. And that's because when you play 13 hands, some of those hands are worth points. And, you know, if you're playing lucky cards, some of those are going to get the plus 20 molt, and some of those are going to be worth points. And if you get too many points, then the round ends early. You don't actually get to play all of your hands. And so in general, what we want to do is we want to score as little points as possible so we can play as many hands as possible. So, okay, we're not going to take any planets. Also, uh, you know, not using any planet cards, that just saves us money. You know, we can sell them. We can avoid purchasing any celestial packs. All right, before we discard here, we are going to take this three of hearts um, and move it to the left. So I'm just taking that three of hearts and then moving it where I want it to be in the future. Um, we'll see it uh, be somewhat important uh, immediately after this. Ending here with a full house. Again, uh, a little bit of work in order to get the three aces here. There was already two aces, and then one of the aces comes from the previous round. We had to move it into the correct position. All right, in the shop here, if we were going for a high score, uh, this aura gives us polychrome, and so we would get a polychrome aura. We could make a polychrome card, and then, you know, already first shop, immolate, uh, eight ball, and blueprint. Second shop, polychrome aura. We're off to a great start if we wanted to go for a high score. This time, we're not going for a high score, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to take Ouija here, which is going to turn all of these into eights. Uh, so we start with four eights in the deck. Here's plus eight more. That's a total of 12 eights. This is, again, this is exactly the same as we did in our glass run, uh, including before we use this Ouija here, this three of hearts. That is the same three of hearts that we had in the previous round. So we moved it so that it would end up in this spectral pack. And now we are moving it uh, one space to the right, so it will end up where we want it to be in the next round. Uh, noting here that this three of hearts then becomes an eight of hearts. So not just eight, but specifically eight of hearts. All right, the last step before we end the shop here, we're going to purchase this abstract joker. Uh, one reason for that is when we re-roll here or if we go into the next shop, there would be a duplicate abstract joker. It gets skipped, and then we get offered whatever the next joker is in the shop. Now, uh, if you think about, we buy this for $4, and then later when we're done with it, we can sell it for $2. So it's just a net cost of, it cost me $2, and the effect is 
we skip the duplicate, we get the next thing instead. So it has kind of the effect of uh, a reroll, a uh, shop reroll, or you know, half a reroll, or something like that. And so you know, it's very cost efficient to do it that way. Um, in the so I have a video about shuffler manipulation. I have a separate video about this shop manipulation, and I demonstrate how to use these duplicates, buying and selling jokers to prevent duplicates, how that actually allows you to dig deeper into the joker pool and get deeper jokers, get them earlier uh, by spending less money overall. So not only do you get them earlier, but you also spend less money on rerolls. Also, if you think about it, uh, in the next round here, we get a temperance from our eight ball, and we also get a fool from our eight ball, so we can make a, another copy of temperance. If I use temperance, and that gives me plus two dollars from my abstract joker, and then when I sell the abstract joker, I get two dollars, then it's net zero. You spend four, you get four. If I have two abs, or if I have two temperances, that gives me two dollars each from having this abstract joker, so that's net money plus 50% value by buying this for $4 and then you know getting the temperance money and then selling it after. So you might be interested in, well, if I also buy this misprint, which is foil, buy it for $8, get $4 from temperance, another $4 from temperance, sell it for $4, that's plus $4. You know, spend eight, get 12. But if I do that, I end up scoring too many points. And, you know, again, it comes back to this issue of I don't want to score too many points so that I can continue playing more hands, more pairs of eights. So this abstract joker, in addition to giving us the skip of the duplicate abstract joker, it also sort of strikes this balance between it gives us enough points to win, but not too many points that we win too early. Here we want to, you know, play as many pairs of eights that we can. Um, previously, what I did for the glass run, I swapped the seven and five here so that the, in the future, I would be able to use a strength card to turn my sevens into more eights. Uh, this time, I don't actually want to do that. I don't want to turn my sevens into more eights. I already have 12 eights. Um, and I will use death to make a few more eights. Um, so, you know, already I have plenty of eights, perhaps too many eights. That is going to be a recurring theme as I talk about, you know, these first couple of rounds is we've got too many eights is actually a problem. That'll make more sense later on. But the bottom line is I don't want to turn my sevens into more eights. So here I'm not going to uh, move the seven. All right, here I have the option to make a gold card. Um, I could choose between either an ace or a two or a six, turning it into gold. Uh, the reason why I pick the six is because uh, I want to play a pair, and I don't want to play two pair, because two pair would be worth too many points. So we'll make one of the sixes gold, and then we'll play the other six. There you can see we get the temperance, and we also get the Magician to make our first uh, lucky card. Um, I am going to play a pair of eights. Here, this eight of hearts, that is the one that used to be our three of hearts. And so, uh, you know, we m manipulated the three of hearts to be in the correct position to show up here. Each pair is worth 200 points. If I play a regular pair, uh, that would be too many points. And so I need the debuffed eight this pair will be only 144 points so that we have room to play another pair. Um, the two of spades here, uh, between these three cards, two of spades, eight of hearts, and then eight of clubs, I want the eights to occur earlier in the next round. I want the two to occur potentially not at all. And so between these three cards, I just look at, okay, where do these three cards end up? 
And then of those, which ones do I want to be eight? Which ones do I want to be the two? And so this first card here of these three ends up being the one that appears at the bottom of the deck. So I just moved the two to the bottom of the deck position. Uh, there's that fool giving us uh, the temperance. Previously, when we were doing the glass run, we made a glass card and then used the fool to make a second glass card. Here, when we're going for money, we'll go ahead and do temperance. Also, you know, even though we're going for money, we could still be interested in removing cards from our deck, you know, potentially making glass cards to remove cards from our deck. Um, again, it goes back to I don't want to score too many points. So I can't afford making glass cards. Glass cards are worth too many points. Uh, before I end here with the uh, full house, eights and aces, I'm going to move the aces. So this is, again, of these five cards here. Sorry. Uh, can I go back? Yeah, of these five cards here, the eights and the aces, I looked at, okay, where do these five cards end up in the next round? And I wanted, of these five, these two, position three and position four, those end up at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so we'll put the aces there uh, so that they end up at the bottom. And then the eights occur not necessarily at the top of the deck, but in the top half of the deck. All right, in the shop here, what we're going to do is we're going to, we have an Arcana pack and we have an Emperor, so we have this choice. Do we open the Arcana pack first or do we use the Emperor first? We're going to use the Emperor first. So here we got to sell the tower and then we're going to open the Arcana pack after. So uh, kind of what's happening here is the next five tarot cards are Lovers, Temperance, Magician, Empress, Judgment. Um, I forget if there's a skip in there, but there's, you know, at least these five uh, tarot cards. Lovers, Temperance, Magician, Empress. And if I open the Arcana pack first, then I get Lovers, Temperance here. And then if I use the, um, oh yeah, Temperance here, and then Magician is the third one. And then after, if I use the Emperor, I get Empress and Judgment. So what I want to do here is I want to use the Magician to get another lucky card. If I have Temperance here and then Magician, I have to choose. I have to choose between Temperance or Magician. I don't get to use both. Another thing is, if I, when we were going for the Glass Run, what I wanted to do was... I wanted to use this judgment to get me a joker, and then that gives me more money from my temperance. And so if I do it in the opposite order, you know, if I use the uh, Arcana pack first and then I use the Emperor after, then I get the temperance first and I get the judgment after. And I want it in the opposite order. What I want is the judgment first, and then I want to save the temperance card in my hand. Actually, if we go into the next round now, the eight ball is going to give us a fool card. And so there could be some benefit to holding this temperance card so that the fool card can give us another copy of temperance. And in order to do that, what I need to do is I need to use the emperor to get the temperance card in hand. Instead of getting temperance card in the arcana pack, we want the temperance card in hand so we can hold on to it. All right, but what we're going to do here, you know, we're not going to take the judgment like we did before in the glass run. We're going to go for the magician because I want to start making lucky cards. Uh, previously, what we did there was we purchased the stencil um, so that we would get more money from our temperance. You know, if we have more jokers, then we get more money. And then I considered for this run doing the same thing where we purchase the stencil, we use the temperance to get money in the round, we use the fool to get another temperance giving us even more money, and then we can, you know, afterwards sell our stencil. 
you know, if we're going for money, you know, why not, you know, start doing it now, you know, getting as much temperance value as we want now. Uh, what I decided uh, a routing that I liked better was to, instead of using the fool to get me another copy of temperance, I'm going to use the fool to get me another copy of hanged man. Um, and that's what we did uh, last time in the glass run, is we did hangman and then use the fool to get another hangman. Uh, here, what we're going to do instead, um, well, we are going to copy the hangman. We are going to copy the hangman with the fool, but we're going to use more rerolls than I did last time. Last time, we got the hangman and we got the death card from using the eight ball. So we go into the round and then we generate it after. Here I want to re-roll first to pick up the death and the hangman card earlier than I would have. Um, and that is what enables you to copy the temperance with the fool is you hold on to the temperance, you know, you pick up either hangman or death here. That way when you use it, you can use the temperance after and then that's the fool gives you the temperance. Uh, I ended up I ended up not doing that. I decided that I didn't want the temperance. Since we are going for this hangman and in the next shop here, the uh, death card, the lovers here would normally be the next uh, tarot card. It goes hangman, lovers, and then death card. So in order to skip the lovers, um, that is why we need to re-roll the shop in extra time instead of waiting until we get the death and hangman card from the eight ball in the round. So here I actually have to use the temperance early. I have to hold on to the lovers card so that here it skips lovers and it gives me death card instead. All right, going into the round here, uh, we have the option. We can either play Hanged Man first, Death after, and then the Fool will give us a second Death, or we can do Death first, Hanged Man after, Fool gives us another Hanged Man. Um, what I liked better was instead of making an extra 8 with my Fool copying Death card, I wanted to go for Fool copying Hanged Man for the extra card removal. Um, and the reason for that is once we make our gold seal cards, I want to be able to draw my gold seal cards more consistently. I want to be able to draw them earlier. And so the way that we do that is by removing cards from our deck um, as much as possible. All right, with the hanged man here, I have the option to remove two fives from the deck. These are actually the last two fives in the deck. And so, you know, remove all of the fives. Um, what I don't want to happen is I don't want the situation where I accidentally draw here. I've drawn two pair and then I'm not able to play two pair if I draw two pair. And so by removing a six and a five, that leaves me with three sixes and one five. Um, it makes it so that it's less likely for me to draw the two pair. All right, there's that fool card. So it could have been death. It could have been temperance if we were, you know, somewhat careful about it. Uh, but I wanted the hanged man specifically. Allowing me to remove another six, leaving me with, uh, there's... Two more sixes, I think, um, and then also remove a nine, leaving me with one more nine. All right, we get uh, another gold card. Uh, here, uh, this seven, I if I swapped the seven with the five of spades in the boss round, this would have been a five of spades here, which I could turn into gold. Um, I decided I wanted it to be the seven instead. Um, you know, normally you don't want to turn your sevens into the gold cards because you use the strength to turn your sevens into eights. But here I decided I didn't want to turn my sevens into eights. And so it is safe to turn the seven gold instead. 
Uh, normally, you want to save your lucky cards until the end of the round uh, because, you know, if you get the plus 20 molt, that will end the round if you score too many points. Uh, here, I'm playing this lucky card earlier in the round uh, on the second to last hand because this lucky eight of clubs here, this just ends up in the correct place if I play it now instead of later. And then we're able to end with, uh, here's three of a kind, the two lucky eights, um, and then playing just three instead of four, or playing three instead of just two, um, ended up being the correct configuration. All right, here we've got uh, Hangman as our tarot card. So what I want to do, you know, between these two, Arcana Pack or Spectral Pack, I want to open the Arcana Pack first because the Arcana Pack will give me another Fool card. And so I can, you know, the last tarot card that I used was the Devil giving me a gold card. Here, if I use the Hanged Man, then I can use this Fool to give me another Hanged Man. Uh, if I do it in the opposite order, if I go to the uh, Spectral Pack first, um, I'm not able to do that. Or, I mean, I could. I could get this Fool to give me a Hangman, but now doing it in this order, I can use this Hangman in the Spectral Pack instead of having to hold it and wait. Um, you have an option to, you know, put the sevens into this Arcana pack using strength to give us, you know, our sevens into eights. And then you can use this fool to get uh, another strength card if you want to make your uh, sevens into eights that way. Um, you can, you know, make a lucky card here, but I wanted to, you know, I already have enough lucky cards. Um, so I'm just going to go for the card removal. Also, I have enough eights. I don't want any more eights with the strength card. All right, in the spectral pack here, um, the way the gold seal works and aura works kind of the same way is a little bit complicated, but uh, think about it this way. Think about it. The game knows at the beginning of the run which card or cards are going to get the aura or the gold seal. It's determined even before the game knows what cards are in the pack. And the way that it does that is at the beginning, it just kind of, you know, maybe generates a list. Uh, so like the first card to get the aura is the nine of diamonds. And the second card to get the aura is the five of spades. And then the third card is the three clubs or something like that. And then when you open your pack, it'll just give it, it'll just check down the list for each of those cards which ones actually show up in the spectral pack and so it'll check okay nine of diamonds is it there no okay go to the next one uh what did we say we said five of spades is it there no go to the next one three of clubs okay three of clubs gets the gold seal so it just so happens that here the ace of spades is the first in line to get the gold seal and then the seven of spades is second so if I remove this ace of spades, it goes on the seven of spades instead. So I'm going to use this hangman to remove those two cards, ace of spades, seven of spades. The cards that would get the gold seal, I'm going to remove them. So instead, the eight gets the gold seal. And so, you know, what we did was instead of making a gold seal first and then turning into a lucky card, I made the lucky card first and then manipulated the gold seal so that it ended up on the correct card that I wanted. All right, in here we do a couple shop re-rolls so that we can find this juggler. And then also we're going to use another setup here, the duplication glitch, so that we can buy this juggler. So we have the setup for our blueprint that we'll get later. But here, immediately, I'm able to pick up two copies of juggler so we got the minus one hand size from taking a ouija now plus four uh from having the juggler so our hand size is now 11 with 27 cards in our deck you know thanks to using all of these hangman cards uh we're able to draw you know almost half of our deck you know like 40 percent of our deck in the opening hand
And so, you know, here I now have my lucky card. I now have my uh, gold seal card in my 11 cards here. I did not get the one that I wanted. So we're just going to discard until we find it. There it is. All right, now we're in the situation where, okay, I just want to play this gold seal card as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead and play a pair of eights. Um, at the same time that I play my pair of eights, I'm going to add an ace as a way of just getting rid of this ace here. And because I have two aces here, I'm not able to play two aces for uh, two pair. Two pair would be worth too many points. I'm only able to play one ace at a time. Also, uh, three of a kind eights would be too many points. So here we're in this situation where because I have so many eights, you know, I still have uh, 13 eights out of my 27 cards. Half of my cards are eights. I'm not able to play any cards, right? They're kind of stuck in my hand. If I play three of a kind, that's it. We, you know, the round is over. So this is what I mean when I say there's too many eights already in the deck. And we want to start removing eights from our, our deck, or at least we want to stop adding more eights to our deck. All right, again, uh, we're going to play a pair of eights and then throw away an extra ace and nine. So, you know, again, we're stuck with all of the eights, but we are able to get rid of these two cards. Strength there, you would have the opportunity to turn your sevens into eights. We said we don't want to do that. And then for the final round here, I'm going to turn uh, my last eight of clubs into a lucky card. And then also I have the devil here where I can make another gold card. All right, before we do that, we are going to discard three eights. And then it just so happened that discarding one more eight uh, is how we're going to manipulate the shuffler here. All right, so, you know, a note about these lucky cards. Again, we want to save the lucky cards until the end of the round, if possible, you know, at least for this early, or at least for this early part here. Um, also, something that's kind of tricky with this um, gold seal card is because it returns to your hand, when it does return to your hand, it automatically reorganizes all of your cards, right? You know... Sometimes what we'll do is we'll rearrange the cards that we play and we'll rearrange the cards that we don't play. And then they'll keep that rearrangement as a way of, you know, shuffler manipulation. Well, the gold seal card, it prevents that. When the gold seal card returns to your hand, it goes to where it is supposed to be and it reorders all your cards according to rank. So part of why there is less shuffler manipulation later on in the run is you just, you can't because the gold seal will undo all of that uh, rearrangement. All right, uh, in here we've got Immolate again, and you know, with the help of the jugglers, we've got uh, 11 cards that we're looking at here. So the reason why I discarded the three eights and then discarded the one eight of spades instead of discarding more or less was because I wanted to avoid the situation where my uh, gold seal card ended up here and then getting immolated. So that's why. That's why we, uh, you know, discarded the eights in a weird way. Uh, let's see if I could. There we go. Uh, notice here when we immolate, we get rid of one of our aces and we're left with a bunch of eights. So I'm actually going to re-roll here. I'm going to do it again because I want to, uh, I didn't stop it fast enough, uh, but yeah, maybe you can kind of squint and then see it here. Uh, I'm left with two aces and then the two of spades here. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do that is I wanted to have less eights left over. I wanted to remove more of the eights. And so the reroll here was just to remove an extra eight and then give us an ace left over, a non-eight. And then there's, uh, we can see we were down to, even though we used the death card to create an extra eight, we're down to 11 eights. 
out of uh, now 22 cards, you know, still half of our deck. That's still too many eights. All right, in the shop here, uh, because we have the negatives, we're able to pick up this uh, negative egg. Um, when I was doing the glass run, not only did I use this um, abstract joker for a skip in the shop queue, I also picked up a scary face joker because that was a duplicate that I could skip. Um, and I think there may have been one other skip that I did. Here, I actually wanted less skips because I know there are these negative jokers coming up in the glass run the negative ends up on ride the bus which you we wanted to ride the bus for the scoring for the glass run you know so that we could have enough points in the end this time we don't want the scoring we don't want to ride the bus we want the egg instead so you can actually move the negative to be on some joker that you might want you you have some limited control you can move it uh one or two or sometimes up to five spaces um, and so we moved it on purpose so that it ended up on the egg. And then uh, we want to re-roll so that we can pick up this emperor. Emperor giving us hermit. And then with the extra money, re-roll again. So that in this shop, we're able to pick up uh, in round five here already, we've got our burglar. Finally, we can get rid of this abstract joker. We don't have to worry about scoring too many points. All right, so notice here we've got 10 hands because we've got the blueprint and we've got the burglar, and we've got our gold seal eight to help us. Um, but the psychic requires us to play five cards, which means I'm not actually able to play all of my hand. I have to, you know, sort of play this gold seal eight plus four others. So I'm limited on the number of hands that I can play. Also, I'm limited on the types of hands that I can play. Um, so for example, if we play uh, something like that, I'm not able to play four of a kind eights. Four of a kind eights would be worth too many points. So I'm limited to playing just three of a kind eights instead. Um, and then with my three of a kind eights, I have to play some non eights. And so this is the situation where I really wish I had less eights. And okay, luckily we have the death card so we can make our second copy of our gold seal card, second copy of our gold seal lucky card. Um, I'm choosing to remove an eight to replace it with an eight rather than a non eight. All right, so again here, three of a kind and then two non eights. All right, in this situation, um, I have uh, for my lucky cards, I happen to know when the lucky cards are going to proc. I know when they're going to give me the plus 20 molt. And so here I'm choosing to play the regular eight, not the lucky eight, um, because I know that the next one, the third uh, lucky card is going to give me the plus 20 molt. So I want to save that. All right, in this position now, sorry, uh, not the next lucky eight, but the next, next one, right? So here, instead of playing two lucky eights, uh, I'm gonna play just the one lucky eight because I know uh, the plus 20 molt is coming up. Um, I've been going through this without looking at my notes. Let me get caught up in my notes now. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Is that where we're at? We, that says, duh, we did this. We got the burglar. Uh, here we do this stuff. Okay, I'm caught up. I'm, I'm caught up in the notes. All right, uh, and then now we're in the situation where for one, we're just out of eights. And then two, you'll see the first eight gives us uh, the plus 20 molt. Um, and now we're gonna start playing uh, five of a kind eights to end, um, you know, since we're all gonna be lucky.
All right, in the shop, we've got Temperance and Priestess. We're going to, before we open the Arcana Pack, we're going to do some re-rolling. All right, this is going to look super weird. Uh, normally, what you want to do is you want to use the Priestess. It gives you two planets. You sell the two planets. That's $4. Um, instead, what we're going to do, well, in order to do that, you need room, and I would need to get rid of this Temperance. And, you know, you would think, okay, well, you just use the temperance and you already got, you know, this negative egg here. You already got plenty of money from the temperance. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sell the priestess so that I can buy the justice. The justice is important. The justice is, again, there's another justice that comes up. I want to skip a duplicate justice. So the way that I do that is I need to make room. I need to get rid of the priestess. Uh, it's sad that we lose the $2, uh, but it, trust me, is worth it. Now, the reason why we are holding on to the uh, temperance is because we know coming up we have another negative that we can buy. We don't need the, you know, what is it, uh, the crazy joker that powers up straights. Actually, we want it because it just gives us more temperance value. Um, and then also, uh, it, you know, when we get to the final round, that's the thing that we could sell if we need to sell something in the final round. Um, also it, it not giving us any score is actually a benefit. That's actually a good thing. We want no jokers that gives us any score. And then now that we've purchased the crazy joker, we can use the temperance after. And again, you might think, okay, well, if the crazy joker costs us money and then we you know buy it before we use the temperance and the temperance gives us money uh we sort of break even right if we sell it now uh it'll break even but because we have this future temperance is also worth more money um, we can get more than enough value from having this negative um some manipulation here uh, to get the negative on the blueprint. So of the negatives that show up in the shop, there are sort of three of them very close proximity. There's this negative, two jokers later. So it's negative, foil, negative, and then another negative that shows up after that. And so in the shop manipulation, we can control which joker gets the negative, but because they're sort of clustered together, I can't you know, spread, uh, I don't have complete control over where the negative ends up. I was able to get this negative uh, blueprint, but I wasn't able to get some other more useful negative, for example. Um, so that's how we ended up with the negative crazy joker. But that's fine. Really, we just cared about getting the negative blueprint. Uh, the reason why we're waiting on the Arcana pack is because this Arcana pack here gives us temperance. Um, also, holding on to this Justice card skips a Justice card that would show up in the Arcana pack. Um, we wait to use the Temperance so that I can get more money from my Temperance. And then because I'm waiting on using the Temperance, I'm waiting on the Arcana pack so that I can use the Temperance after. Uh, here, uh, before we close the Arcana pack, there is one manipulation that I care about, one manipulation that I want to do. I want to take my gold seal eight and then move it to the right. Now you would think with 22 cards left in the deck uh, with a hand size of 11 drawing half of our hand, half of our deck at the same time. Actually, we have uh, two gold seal eights. You would think you would think you would just get it. You would just get the gold seal eight in your starting hand. Turns out it didn't happen, and so I need this gold seal eight to be somewhere. You know, some one of these, one of these is my gold seal eight, or one of these is in my starting hand. Um, the easiest one was to just put it here on the right side. Ended up being fine. And then you know we want to make sure that we're copying our burglar. All right, uh, here we want to use our gold seal eight, okay? And then we want to save our lucky eights as much as possible. All right, 
we get the opportunity to make another gold card and the gold card that I'm going to choose is this eight. Um, so one reason for that is if you have a gold seal gold card, what you can do is you can play it on the final round, it'll return to your hand and then you'll get money from it. So, you know, one benefit is, well, it's a gold card that will never go away. You can keep playing it. You'll keep it in your hand. You'll always get the money from it. Um, it is not a lucky card. So when we play it, we don't get money from it, but that is sometimes a benefit for us. So these lucky cards, sometimes they give us the plus 20 molt, uh, which is bad because we don't want to score. Um, and so sometimes I want to be able to control, play lucky card sometimes, play regular card other times. And so having this split, one of these lucky, one of these not lucky, I can control that. I can balance using lucky cards uh, or not. All right, uh, you know, for example, there we played the two gold seal cards because we know that they're going to return to our hand. Um, and we wanted one of them to be the gold seal lucky card, one of them to be the gold seal uh, not lucky card. All right, we get the opportunity to use death here. And then also we can use fool to make another death card. Um, the priestess. If we don't use the priestess, then we can use this fool to copy the temperance from the shop. Um, here, that would give you like $32, was it? $32 temperance or something like that. And so here I'm choosing instead of an extra $30 temperance, I'm getting an extra death card because I want to have even more copies of my gold seal card as early as possible that way i can you know play not just two lucky eights but three lucky eights or four lucky eights or you know however much it is i'm um, also if i just have more of them then it's easier for me to draw them so here we'll go ahead and make another copy there we'll start you know again getting rid of eights we already have too many eights so let's start getting rid of eights like this eight of diamonds here make another lucky card there's two of them and then now we're getting into that stage where, like I said, it's sort of repetitive. You just play the same hand over and over again, the same pair of eights. Uh, Planet X there, the five of a kind. We don't need the help scoring, you know, because we have uh, lucky cards with dusk. That's already enough points. Um, and at the end of the run, we want to get it in a situation where you can actually play five of a kind for like 1400 points or something like that and just keep playing five of a kind eights repeatedly um, we want the capability to do that uh death card again this time instead of making more lucky cards um, i want to make the gold eight because now Sorry, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, here it is. Yeah, so now this lucky card doesn't give me the molt. So, you know, we haven't hit the molt uh, so far in, I don't know, 10 eights or 12 eights or something like that. Some large number of lucky cards, we haven't hit the molt. But now I know the next one will be the molt. Uh, notice here, you know, our pairs, even though they're only worth like 50 points each pair, if you do 50 points times 13 hands or whatever it is, it does add up. Um, and so I don't want to hit the molt. If I hit the molt, it'll give me something like 600 points. That'll be too much. So now I'm going to switch to playing the uh, not lucky eights instead. And then once again, we have the opportunity to do death and then make another copy of death. And so, okay, what are we gonna do here? One thing that we're gonna do is I want to be able to play five of a kind, five lucky 
eights. So we'll go ahead, we'll make another one of those. And then this last one, I'm actually, I'm not going to make an eight. So I want to avoid the situation where, you know, now that we have the burglar, I'm not able to discard anymore. You know, I play my cards, they return to my hand, I just keep playing the same cards. I can't discard. Uh, which means if I have too many gold seal cards, they get stuck in my hand. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to make cards that are not gold seal now. And what I've elected to do here is I'm going to make this four into another gold card, another gold seven, rather than, you know, I could make a gold uh, eight with the gold seal, um, but I don't want to get stuck in my hand. All right, so there we go. There's all my lucky cards and I get my money from my gold cards as well. Sorry, let me turn the page on my notes here. Uh, ah, yes, that's where we are. All right, so here's the deck. Here's all the uh, gold seal cards. I have some non-8s left over that I am, and I have some 8s that I'm trying to get rid of. All right, in the Arcana pack, here I want to move my gold seal eights again. You know, we're going into the next round. I want my gold eights or my gold seal cards to show up in the correct place. And now, you know, you might be thinking, okay, now you've got, you know, seven gold seal cards or whatever it is, and you've got hand size 11, and there's only 22 cards left in the deck. It can't possibly matter where you put the gold seal cards. They just show up in your starting hand. Well, here, what I'm gonna do is, you know, maybe a little bit controversial or potentially interesting here. I'm going to sell the juggler. I'm actually going to, in this shop, I'm gonna sell both jugglers, reducing our hand size back down to seven. And so that's why seven is the correct number of gold seals. If I have, uh, you know, anything more than seven, I could get stuck with the wrong combination of gold seal cards. So I want exactly seven to go with my hand size of seven. All right, I'm using the judgment here to give me the next joker. I don't actually care that it's a mad joker. It just happens to be the next one. We have the option here to pick up the negative superposition. So, you know, if you were playing straights, you could get negative blueprint and negative egg, negative crazy joker and negative superposition if that's a thing that you wanted to do. You could even make uh, your gold seal cards. You can hit them with uh, strength and turn make a gold seal straight and then repeatedly play the same straight you know maybe that's something potentially interesting anyway we're just going to re-roll straight through this because now i've got dusk that shows up and if i do this uh, duplication glitch so here's dusk close the collection allows me to see another dusk so i'm trading my jugglers for dusk and then those dusk are going to give me those extra lucky card activations all right and now this basically this completes the joker setup right so you saw at the you know when we get to the end we have two blueprints copying my juggler at the start of the round I want to switch it to the eight ball for the mid round here. And then at the end, I want to switch to blueprint onto my dusks. These are the final jokers that we're going to have, which means no more shop rerolls, only uh, collecting money now. Also, no celestial packs, only arcana packs, which means the routing also gets a lot easier. So that is part of why I was able to put this run together so fast is I don't have to worry about shopping. I don't, that's, I don't have to route that. I don't have to route my hands uh, as much. You know, there's a little bit, but there's not as much. All right, so here with my gold seal cards, I'm playing uh, as much as I can safely get away with. Um, I'm not able to play three of a kind because if I hit the plus 20 molt, three of a kind is worth uh, like 2,000 points or something like that. 2,000 is too much uh, compared to just a regular pair is fine at 
uh, you know, just under 600 points. Then I can play, you know, I'm trying to play 13 hands. Some of them will be with the plus 20 molt. Some of them won't be. So that's why I'm playing pairs here. And then at the same time that I'm playing my pairs, I am just throwing away these other cards here so that I can try to dig to my final hand. I want my final hand to be all lucky cards. Uh, I can get rid of the gold seven because, you know, at the end, I know that I have the gold eight coming up. All right, this fool card, actually, we're going to hold on to. We're not going to use it right away. Uh, the last tarot card that we used was an emperor. Um, before the emperor, if we didn't use the emperor, there was uh, judgment in the shop. Before that, there was death. Uh, I don't want any of those, so I'm going to you know, use the fool here, or hold the fool. Um, I know it's safe to play three of a kind this time because I know the you know, I'm not going to get the lucky proc. Holding the fool allows me to get the hermit there. Uh, I don't need any more lucky cards. Actually, I want my other eights to be non-lucky in situations where you know I need to play non-lucky eights. I want to be able to do that. Same with the devil, I don't need more gold cards because I'll always end up with my gold eights. Three of a kind there, again, I know it's safe. All right, here's where, you know, like I said, it's starting to get repetitive here. Now I'm in the situation where I know uh, I've got a lucky plus 20 molt coming up. And here we've got a very satisfying 4,000 uh, right under this 4,200. And so that is a lot of the routing for this seed is just calculating, okay, how much can I get away with? Can I play as many eights as possible? You know, three of a kind here, three of a kind there, four of a kind there, so that I get just under scoring here. Here's what it looks like when we do Dusk. No money. No money on that. That's, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, 20? 20 procs there? So, you know, it's, it's fine. It's within reason that we didn't get any money there. But that is part of why I want the extra lucky card procs so that I can, you know, long term, long term, get that money. All right, in the shop here, we got the Jumbo Arcana Pack. That's going to give us, uh, you know, just a hangman here. So I can remove some more eights from my deck. Um, potentially, I want to shuffle these eights around. Um, within the round, when we're playing cards, because the Gold Seal cards return to our hand, I'm not able to rearrange them. Um, so I'm relying on the Arcana Pack to allow me to rearrange when I need to. Uh, also here we've got the telescope voucher um, before when we were doing the glass run we used that to make uh, you know Pluto cards for a high card leveling up uh, if this were a high score seed we specifically searched for seeds that had the telescope is how we ended up with this seed but we don't need it for this run All right, now we can safely play four of a kind. You know, four of a kind is going to be worth, uh, you know, about 500 points. But, you know, we can play 500 times 10 or whatever. That's only 5,000 points. As long as we're careful uh, to avoid the plus 20 molt. Here we got to play two because we get the plus 20 there. Now it's safe to play four. Two again with the plus 20 molt. All 
Uh, we want to save the hermit. So last time we had the fool card and we saved the fool card so that we could copy the hermit card that was coming up. Here we want to do something similar. Uh, so we have the fool that comes up. And the reason why I want to save the hermit is if I use the hermit, fool will give me another hermit. Here, if I save the hermit, I can use the fool to get a temperance first. I can play the hermit. Well, first I, I get the temperance, which is going to give me $50 instead of $20. Second, if I use the hermit and then the temperance after, then now going forward, whatever the next fool is, it will remember the temperance here. Uh, if there's another fool that comes up, I don't remember if there is. Um, so this is, you know, thinking about how I'm routing this. Um, when I route for cards, I just go into the round, I just play out the round, just discarding all the cards, and then recording what order that the cards show up in. Uh, I can do the same thing with the tarot cards. I can just, okay, we'll play uh, pairs of eights over and over again and just record what all the tarot cards are. Now, once I know what the tarot cards are, now I can decide things like, oh, I see where the fool is. I can try a play around that fool. Okay, don't use the hermit because I want to use the fool to give me a temperance instead. So here, for example, using, you know, normally we use the priestess to sell the planets. Here I'm going to sell the priestess again. I know that there's a fool coming up uh, eventually. Um, and then I'm going to use that fool to give me temperance. So I need to sell the priestess instead of using the priestess. All right, uh, we can end the round with, uh, it was 5,200 points, so we didn't have enough room to play four of a kind eights, but we could play three of a kind eights. Again, you're going to try to squeeze in as many eights as possible, now mixing up threes and fours. All right, uh, you know, there again, another 20 lucky card uh, gives us just the one times plus $20. But, you know, on average, so $20 divided by 20 there, you know, about $1 per card on average. All right, I don't care about Jokers. I don't care about Celestial Pack. I do want what's in the uh, Arcana Pack here. Um, I want to move my eights so that, you know, in the next round, I get them in my starting hand so that I can play them right away. Um, there's nothing here that I need. Uh, I don't want to take Wheel of Fortune because I don't want, you know, to get powered up jokers. Um, so that would cause me to score too many points. So we're just going to skip here. Most tarot cards I no longer care about. I just want to sell them. You know, death cards, I just sell it. Hangman, uh, potentially, uh, we might just sell it. All right, in the next round here, we get the fool that I was talking about. And so, you know, that's why we sold the priestess, is because we've got the fool coming up so that we can copy our temperance from the ancient past, uh, giving us another $50. This... Uh, Hermit here is safe for me to use. I happen to know that there's several Hermits coming up, and so I want to be able to use all of them. I know that there's not a Fool coming up for a while, so I don't have to worry about uh, messing up my Fool. Uh, here I am saving the ace and the two because I happen to know, uh, not right away, but eventually, eventually there's going to be the hanged man. Again, here a mix of threes and fours. We play two at a time when we get to the, uh, you know, lucky card proc there. Um, I got the hanged man to remove my two cards, and then now when I refill my hand, I have almost what I want. I have to get rid of the seven, so we will play that. 
And now we've got all of the lucky cards that we need. All right, let me, there we go. All right, so four of a kind, that brings us to 6,900, you know, less than 100 points left. All right, ooh, we got the money twice that time. And you can see already we have no problem making points here. We get enough of uh, the plus 20 molt that we can make, you know, 40,000 from our just regular lucky cards. All right, in the shop here, the order of operations is instead of opening Emperor first, we open the Arcana pack first um, because I know there's a devil card that would come up. And so if I sell the de devil and then use the emperor, I get another devil card. If I open the arcana pack first, it skips the devil card. And then that's all we got to do as far as, uh, you know, card rearrangement there. You know, now we only have 18 cards left in the deck. It's a little bit easier for us to find our lucky cards. Though it's not guaranteed you know we only draw seven out of 18 all right nothing crazy this round like i said the you know, some of the bits are somewhat repetitive. So, you know, here we just got a montage of us playing four of a kind eights. Uh, we did get a hanged man there. You know, some consideration for trying to make that work, you know, where we find a card that we could remove with the hanged man. Uh, thing to keep in mind is these four cards return to our hand and then take up spots. And then we also want, you know, our other cards here, our gold eights to end with, uh, our fifth lucky card to end with. So there's not a whole lot of extra room in our hand to just be holding on to cards to wait for the hangman. And so sometimes we'll use it if we get the opportunity. Uh, sometimes we won't use it uh, because it really we don't need it. Uh, we've already removed enough cards from our deck. Hermit and Temperance at the same time for $70 there. Nice. Three of a kind there because I know the lucky plus 20 is coming up. Another lucky plus 20. Uh, bringing us to 9,000 here. This one is not as close and part of the reason for that is there were a lot of the plus 20 from the lucky cards and so it was difficult to maneuver it to where you know we fit in more cards than we did um, and so we had to settle with uh, uh, what we did you know we still played a lot of four of a kinds and then uh, we were with the lucky cards we got the three of a kind instead of just two at a time All right, ending the round here, we've got, you know, this is still the big blind in Anti-4. We're already at $1,000. Uh, by the way, we didn't really get the setup online until, you know, the start of Anti-3. So this is in four rounds, we went from $100 to $1,000. Uh, in this shop here, we got the devil card that we're going to sell. And we're going to skip this Arcana pack. Uh, it is a jumbo Arcana pack. Let's pay attention to what our first couple tarot cards are. All right, so first we've got Hanged Man and Hermit. So one thing, you know, if we open the Arcana pack, we have to choose Hermit or Hanged Man. 
uh, here. We get the opportunity to use the hangman and then the hermit after. Um, we said, okay, we don't really need the hangman. It's nice if we can get it, but we don't need it necessarily. So this is fine, I guess. Uh, actually, what we get is temperance. So if we open the Arcana Pack, the Arcana Pack gives us Hanged Man, Hermit, Temperance. So I get to choose Hermit or Temperance. If I wait, then in the round here, I get Hermit from the 8-Ball and then separately get Temperance so I can get both Hermit and Temperance. Uh, it works out. It is better. Instead of opening the Arcana Pack, it is better to wait so that I can get both instead of having to choose. Uh, a lot of lucky card procs, you know, a lot of the molt, you know, the plus 20 molt on this round. So we've got, you know, some pairs I was forced to play, some three of a kind I was forced to play. Not able to play as many uh, four of a kind as we did in the previous round. But we are able to fit in because we did not level up our five of a kind. Five of a kind is only worth 1,400 points. I can squeeze in a few five of a kinds here at the end. Uh, this fool card we're going to hold on to. So remember we had, or I don't know, it went by kind of fast. Uh, earlier on in the round we had temperance. Then in the middle of the round we had hermit, another hermit, and then now this fool card. And so, you know, one option is if I don't play the hermits, I can use this fool to get a temperance. Uh, but, you know, since we did play the hermits, I could use this fool to get another hermit or... You know, the best case scenario is we save all of our fools for temperance. Temperance being $50 is a big incentive. And so if we can, we'll save this fool, even if it means holding on to it for, uh, you know, a couple hands, you know, a couple eight ball procs. We lose, you know, maybe two to four tarot cards, but then we exchange it for a $50 te temperance. We'll be worth it. Luckily for us, we're at the end of the round here, uh, so it's not that dire. The last hand only gives us one tarot card anyway because we're using Dusk. Uh, once again, here we have uh, not a Jumbo Arcana Pack, but we have a Mega Arcana Pack. We're going to skip this because, again, there's the situation of having multiple desirable cards in the Arcana Pack, and then by skipping it, then we can separate them. Uh, that's the deck update. You know, we've got the Gold Seal cards. We've gotten a couple Hanged Man since the last time we saw the deck, and so this is what it looks like now. Uh, just 15 cards left in the deck. Uh, 16 cards? 15 cards. Whatever. Alright, so now we've got the crystal ball. We didn't get the crystal ball until anti-5. You know, unfortunately, we didn't get to do crystal ball stuff in round 3 or round 4. Uh, in the high scoring run we were able to get the crystal ball online earlier and we were able to do a lot of crystal ball stuff uh here it's fine it's fine you know in anti-5 we still got you know four rounds that we could do crystal ball stuff so this is again you know the reason why we didn't open the arcana pack is again we have temperance and hermit happening at the same time and so you know i don't want to have to choose and then that's why we hold the fool so that we can get the temperance
yeah, there's a temperance here that we hold on to. So there, you know, again, I've got temperance and hermit and I want to use the hermit. Uh, if I hold the temperance, I can use the temperance after the hermit. And then that way, when the fool comes up, which is right now, then I can copy my temperance. So this is again going back to, you know, you scout out the round, you see what's coming up, what tarot cards are coming up, and then once you know what tarot cards are coming up, then you can decide uh, what order of operations. All right, so nothing real crazy uh, until the, well, not even anything that crazy at the end of this. Since I know that the last hand, I'm gonna use the Dusk on my blueprints, uh, I know I'm only getting one tarot card. And so I don't need to sell all of these. I can actually, I'm gonna hold on to the Chariot. Uh, here, something a little bit interesting, you know, for the last several rounds, we've been copying the dusk with both blueprints. Here, a thing that I'm doing differently is I'm splitting it. I'm going blueprint eight ball and then blueprint dusk so that instead of getting just one tarot card, I'm going to get two tarot cards. Um, if I generate only one tarot card, I get the strength card and then this fool ends up being in the arcana pack and you know if there's something else in the arcana pack that i want potentially i don't want the fool in there with it what i want to do is i want to generate the tarot card now to get the fool and then separate it from what ends up in the arcana pack uh there's another reason but that is a reason all right so in the mega arcana pack here we've got all of this stuff here. We don't need judgment or justice or death or star. Really what I'm looking for is the emperor here. I want to have this fool. If it's in the arcana pack, then I have to use it. Um, if I have it in my hand, I can save it. And so that is another reason why we want to generate the extra tarot card is so that I can hold on to this fool rather than it being in the Arcana pack and us being forced to use it. Uh, we hold on to the chariot uh, so that, you know, there's a chariot in here that gets skipped. Ah, the... If you go back to the last round, uh, I'm not going to go back to it, but we had Justice and Chariot, and we sold the Justice and then kept the Chariot. We have another option. We could sell the chariot and then keep the justice. And so in this arcana pack here, there is a justice. So if we were holding on to the justice, if we were saving it, this justice would get skipped. Because we were holding on to the chariot, there was a chariot that gets skipped. So it's kind of the same between the justice and the chariot. You hold one and then that's the one that gets skipped. When we open up this emperor here, this emperor is going to do a couple things. One is it's going to try to generate another emperor, which it can't. Emperor can't generate emperor, so that emperor is going to get skipped. Then it's going to try to generate uh, another justice card, and that justice card is going to be skipped. If we held the justice and there was a chariot in here instead, then in order to use the emperor, you have to sell your justice. Emperor generates another justice. And so because we have justice here instead of the chariot, then this emperor is going to skip another justice. So we get an extra skip if we uh, hold on to the chariot instead of holding on to the justice card.
All right, so again, you know, this Fool card, the reason why we wanted the Fool in our hand instead of in the Arcana pack is because there is a Temperance coming up, but it doesn't come up right away. And so, you know, already the we went through the whole Arcana pack, no Temperance. We, in our hand here, generated Strength and Hermit, no Temperance. So we're holding on to this Fool for a really long time. And then there, okay, so we got the Temperance, we can use the Fool, and then we can use the Emperor first, because I know it's not gonna give me a Temperance, and then I can use the Temperance after the Emperor. And so if there's another Fool that comes up, it'll copy Temperance instead of Emperor. Plus 20 molt on the four of a kind is okay. Um, gives us 2,300 points, which is fine because now we have a threshold of uh, 21,000 points. As long as we don't do too many of those. Temperance Fool Temperance for plus $100 there. Lucky four of a kind again. We got to keep playing four of a kinds. Unfortunately, we can't play five of a kind because we keep getting the lucky plus 20. Now we can play a five of a kind now that it's safe. For the last round here, we do get the lucky plus 20 on the five of a kind, but we've got uh, you know, just under, once again, this is 20,000 points out of 21,000. Uh, at the end here, we're going to hold on to the sun. Uh, you know, just again, in the Arcana pack, there's another sun that we want to skip. Arcana pack, nothing interesting here other than just, you know, slight rearrangement of cards. Make sure we copy our burglar. Now we're on to the second to last round. All right, nothing too crazy here. Uh, we do get the option for the Hanged Man, so I was able to find uh, a Hanged Man, though as we've demonstrated, not super important that we get the Hanged Man, we have no problem getting our Gold Seal 8s. Uh, another Hanged Man that shows up, uh, we're able to not get rid of two cards at a time because we're holding on to all of our gold zeal cards, but we can get rid of one card. You know, this is the second to last round, so the card removal doesn't matter that much. Uh, we use, in the previous hand, we use Hangman first, Temperance after, so that here we can use Fool to give us a Temperance. Uh, if we needed to, use the Hangman and then use the Temperance after. We can play five of a kind. Get rid of another card. All right, so this is where the this recording, this video that I'm doing uh, started. Uh, we started at the end of round 15, so we haven't played the final hand yet. We've got a death card, justice card, temperance card. Okay, so uh, we want to be a little bit careful how we navigate the last shop. 
Um, it, you know, may not seem like it matters too much. You know, one extra tarot card here or there it doesn't matter that much. Um, but you know, we'll pay special attention here. The end is kind of interesting and it only works, uh, if we're very careful. So here, uh, again, we will try to see how much money that we can make in just the final round alone. All right, we're going to sell uh, the death card and the justice card, and we're going to hold on to the temperance, um, which we can use later. We're going to use our dusk. All right, we get an emperor card. All right, what we want to do is, you know, you can use emperor and then open arcana pack. We're going to open arcana pack first. And then when we use this emperor, again, it's going to do the same thing where there would be another emperor, but it gets skipped. Uh, card rearrangement here. All right, so we get the fool. The reason why we hold the temperance is so that we can use the emperor and then use the fool to copy the temperance instead of copying the emperor. All right, I want to buy the strength card here because I know that the next tarot card would be a strength. If I re-roll the shop here, instead of giving me a strength, it skips ahead to the emperors. So, you know, the effect there is I bought the strength for $4. I re-rolled the shop for $5. I spent $9 in order to get one skip in the tarot cards. So that better be worth it. Because it cost me nine bucks to do that. All right, at the end here, we can go ahead and safely sell our negative crazy joker, removing the debuff. All right, there, the, there would be another high priestess that comes up. We hold on to the high priestess before we use the emperor because then it skips a high priestess. And, you know, normally, okay, with the high priestess, you can use it and then sell the planets for $4. So it is better than your average tarot card, uh, typically. It's better than a random tarot card. Um you know, you get $4 instead of just selling it for $2. Um, except, you know, if you skip ahead in the tarot queue and you're able to find, uh, you know, these higher impact, higher value tarot cards, then it's worth it for the skip. So we use the emperor to skip a high priestess. And you'll see why at the end. All right, that priestess there, again, we sell it instead of using the priestess because there's going to be a fool. And then we want to be able to get temperance from the fool. Okay, so now it's safe to use the fool first, get the temperance, use the priestess second, and then use the temperance last if there were another fool coming up, but I happen to know that there isn't. All right, I told you it was a marathon. I told you it was a grind, but we're almost there. Another temperance. There it is. That's the money shot. So here is the absolute last tarot card that we get. Okay, we get strength, we get 
Hierophant, and then the last one is a Temperance. And so in the shop, we took the strength and then re-rolled to get a skip. We skipped uh, one of the priestess. We used the emperor to skip a priestess. And because we used both of those skips, plus an extra one from re-rolling, you know, we're able to find this last temperance card. And so, you know, I gave uh, the save file in the last shop. I gave it to someone else so that they could try it out. And they missed, they didn't get this last temperance card because they didn't know what routing that I used. And so that is why we do all of those machinations in order to get uh, this last extra $50 here. All right, that's what the deck looks like after we removed, uh, you know, the last couple of cards there. Uh, this I thought was kind of funny. Uh, the hands played, you know, we did, we started out with pairs, you know, repeatedly playing our lucky pair, then upgraded to three of a kind, four of a kind. Once we got to the higher uh, scoring values, we could safely play multiple five of a kinds. And so, you know, on this round here, we played something like, 10 five of a kinds and so we've got kind of a nice even spread of these different hands here and we've also managed to get you know this forty-five thousand as close as we can to this fifty thousand here uh so we get money on that second to last card and we actually don't get money on the last card, which means we could have sold one of our blueprints or one of our dusk, you know, probably the negative blueprint. We could have gotten more money by selling it because, you know, the once we got the money, then the extra lucky cards didn't actually give us any money. So we could have sold this negative blueprint and gotten even more. But, you know, it is a little bit satisfying to have you know, basically exactly $3,000 here uh, with slightly more because we do get the gold card value here. And then that's it. That's how you get $3,000. You know, we did have the help of the white whale duplication. We got the extra copies of Blueprint, uh, but you can't say we didn't earn it.